This is the Forex Q&A podcast. This is VP, professional Forex prop trader here in the United States, answering your user-submitted Forex trading-related questions every Monday morning. Now, if you have a Forex trading-related question that is on your mind, it is way too late to ask me, but put your big boy pants on and go to the No Nonsense Forex YouTube channel and search the videos. It's probably there. But if you have exhausted every other option, you can go to the No Nonsense Forex Discord forum. Link will be provided down below in the show notes and in the YouTube description. Six more professional traders have been added to the testimonials tab on nononsenseforex.com. Uh, more than six people had <laughs> filled out the testimonials form, but a lot of people are not doing it right, or they're getting really close, but they're not quite there. Now, let me explain. So I take the testimonials form very seriously, and I'm very strict about it, because what I'm looking for is people who have either been hired by a prop firm and also funded by a prop firm. So at that point, you are officially a pro trader. Or if you don't go the prop trader route and you are trading your own money, I want you to be at a point to where you are actually paying the bills and putting food on the table as a result of the money you're making in Forex trading. Please don't fill out the form until you have gotten to that point. Um, be patient. That tab is not going anywhere. Um, so there will come a day. Uh, but those are the requirements I have. Uh, I try to spell it out pretty clearly on the form, but a lot of people don't read the directions at all, and they just start filling it out. Um, but some people were just a little bit short of actually being funded, for example. So I said, hey, you know, you're, you're not far. You know, <laughs> Come back in a couple months when you're funded, and I'll put you on the board. So six more people are. We have a couple Brits, a few Americans. Our first African trader is up there, and uh, many, many more to come. Exciting times, indeed. Uh, also exciting, I thought, was, and I tweeted this out, not everybody follows me on Twitter. You should follow me on Twitter. It is always at the very bottom of the show notes in the YouTube description, the link where you can just go follow me. But I got to be on another podcast, uh, and this time it was uh, extra special because it was a podcast I listen to every single week, uh, more than once a week, actually, The Silver Doctors Podcast. Um, what I'll do, actually, if you didn't catch it, I'll put the link down below in the description and in the show notes as well. Uh, they do the same thing I do and put my podcast episodes on YouTube as well, so I'll just take you there. Uh, but one thing I haven't done in the past, and I didn't know if I ever would, was start disclosing some of the sources to where I get a lot of my own information um, about economics and just about anything involving instruments where I, I take more of a buy and hold approach. I said before, uh, mainstream media is fine as long as you are getting your share of alternative media as well, because alternative media tells you things that mainstream media never will. Um, I do watch some mainstream media. I do like Bloomberg sometimes. Um, you just have to understand those networks are bought and sold by sponsors, and it is not in those sponsors' best interests to have these news outlets preaching doom and gloom. Um, but what's really cool about alternative media is they can be biased as well, but you are getting opinions and, most importantly, facts and numbers and history that you will never get on the other side. And you need this to draw an objective, intelligent conclusion. And places like Silver Doctors is one of the places I go to for that information. So when you're done with the Forex Q&A podcast, if you're looking for something to fill that void, uh, you could certainly do worse than Silver Doctors. they got a really great product. And another one... I'm going to give you two sources here. Um, another podcast I really like is done by the guy whose book I told you to go buy in the crypto episode, uh, Eric Townsend. And the name of the podcast is called Macro Voices. And I would say, I don't know if it's as fun as listening to Silver Doctors. It's a little more like the sophisticated investor type podcast, but it does have a little less of a bias to it, which is also kind of nice because remember, Silver Doctors is brought to you by SD Bullion, which is one of the largest uh, gold and silver retailers in the country. Um, so, you know, they do want you to buy gold and silver, but that does not detract from the fact that, you know, you are getting information you just won't get from any financial media source. Um, so those are two of my big guns right there. So if you would like to go subscribe to their podcast, feel free. And again, both of them put their podcast on YouTube. So I know a lot of you don't have a podcast player. You just like to get your podcast from YouTube, which is fine too. Uh, you have that option as well. But the, the overarching theme of the last couple of episodes I have done is to make sure you don't fall into groupthink. 
And too much mainstream media can get you there. Too much alternative media can get you there. Make sure you are using your own intelligence to draw from both sources and find out what the best decision is for you. I think very few people go this route. Most people don't listen to financial media anyway, um, but when they do, they end up in this echo chamber one way or the other. If you want to be a top point zero 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 one percenter in the world, when it comes to informed investing, understand that drawing from multiple sources like that is always the best way to go. So while it's fresh in your head, subscribe to the Silver Doctors podcast and the Macro Voices podcast. And if you do, you probably won't even miss the Forex Q&A podcast when it's gone. But it is the Forex Q&A podcast currently, and episode 76's topic is one we've taken a long time to get to, haven't we? Uh, this is uh, pretty popular in the world of Forex and the world of trading in general. And you can probably guess that if I've taken this long to talk about it, either I am a complete jerk who's been holding something out on you for a very long time, even though I've already told you that I've given you everything you will ever possibly need to become a professional Forex trader, or I've waited this long to bring it up because it's simply just something I don't use. Uh, and that's the case. So the Commitment to Traders Report, I'm not going to take much time describing what it is. You can go find that elsewhere. Um, but I will say, you know, as always, I do the research for some of these topics. And every once in a while, you'll find topics where there is good in information as far as at least how to use it. Um, not much in the, in the ways of strategy. But at least a tutorial on, you know, this is what this means. This is the difference between open interest and all this other kind of stuff. I had a hard time finding that on YouTube. So good luck. I think Baby Pips does a pretty good job of going over it. But I think there's a reason why there's almost no strategy videos on the Commitment to Traders Report on YouTube or really anywhere at all. Because I don't know about any of you out there who have tried to use it, but every time I have tried to use it, and believe me, I have really put some work into this because it's almost like getting the answers to the test before the test comes out. That's always how I've looked at it, and I'm like, what a really great thing to have. I mean, a lot of the big money out there has to disclose their positions every week. And a lot of those moves don't really show up in the market until weeks later, giving us enough time to do our research and say, okay, I, at this point, am looking for nothing but longs in this particular instrument. Or maybe you just try to time the move and put in a long, for example, if the report is telling you to do so, and then just you know take a more of a buy and hold approach. I think those are the two most common ways this report is used. Those are the two routes I explored, and I did some pretty heavy testing with this, and the end result was, at least for me, nothing but a lot of frustration. I mean, it'd be nice if we knew exactly when these larger moves that we see are going to manifest themselves, but sometimes they happen a week later, sometimes they happen three weeks later, sometimes they don't happen at all, and especially in this 2019 climate when things can just completely turn on you out of nowhere, already inaccurate tools like this become even less accurate. Now, I know those of you out there who have also tested this, you're going to fall into one of two groups. Either you're going to fall into the group that has had the same frustrations that I have, and you simply discarded it and moved on to something else. Um, but there will be a handful of you out there that like it and do claim to have success with it. And say, well, if you just use it like this, it becomes a lot better. The same argument I hear about everything I talk about that I don't personally like. And if you are one of those people, great. Um, you have something pretty special if these results are as good as you claim. So if this is the case, hang on to that sucker and do not let go. And for the rest of you out there, I always say stick to your system, and that's fine. But remember... Part of our system that we use here at No Nonsense Forex does include a peripheral that's completely off to the side, the dollar EVZ, which we spoke about in the volume volatility video. It is every bit as part of our system as an exit indicator would be. It's something I use every single day, and it has saved me a lot of pips over time. So things like this are worth seeking out. Okay, And if I was able to find something like the dollar EBZ, and you guys know, you guys who use it, you know, it's, it's been a bit of a bummer lately, but 
it does a really good job at what it is supposed to do. Something I cannot say for the COT report. So in your spare time, you should always be seeking things like this out. If I am one person and I can find something, surely you can get together with a group of like-minded traders on, oh, I don't know, maybe the No Nonsense Forex Discord forum and find something else out there that can supplement your trading in a very positive way. Um, now, you don't have to go crazy. You don't want to add too many things on to something that already has a lot of moving parts. But if I were to ever in the future stumble upon something that works as well as the dollar EVZ does on barchart.com, I would be more than happy to add it to the system that I'm already running. And if that thing is the COT, if it is a commitment to traders report, and you have found a way to leverage it for the positive, and you are not just being overly optimistic about it, then you keep right on doing what you're doing. Because I feel like the potential of the COT report is there. I have just yet to crack the code myself, and I do more thorough research on these things than anybody I've ever seen. You know, especially with something like that, you know, which I felt had so much potential. Um, but it just goes to show, just chalk another one up for tools which try to predict the future candles in advance like that. They just fail so many more times than they don't. I think that's an instant red flag. I think they should always be approached with some degree of skepticism. So, for example, when the Ichimoku cloud does the twist, and this twist always happens far into the future, or when people say that price is expected to hit this particular resistance line, you know, I really hate stuff like that, too, because way too much can happen between now and the time where you expect price to hit that line. You know, these are just things I generally avoid altogether, um, like Rob at Maverick Trading says, trade the market in front of you. you know, don't trade the market four days from now. You know, that's silly. Use the past to trade the present and let the future work itself out. With a really good system and really good money management, the future is going to be in our favor more often than it's not. And long term, that is all we can ask for. Now, this is all any trader can ask for. So I wish I could have spoken more eloquently on the Commitment of Traders report, but it's been a few years since I've actually really got down and tested it. And I may do it again in the future, but I don't think I will, traders. I mean, anything like that, the attempts to predict the future, the way tools like this do, just always seem to fail. And I feel like I could have better used that time elsewhere. Now, something I feel like has similar qualities to the COT report that I think does a better job, even though it's something you guys know I don't use myself, is the IG Client Sentiment Index and the Daily FX SSI report. Um, now, you guys who have been around this channel for a while know what those are, and you also know that I've told you not to chase sentiment like that. But I do think there is more potential with tools like that that show you actual present data as opposed to something like the COT report. And ever since that Big Banks video, people have been hungering for more when it comes to those tools, and there hasn't been a lot out, but you guys know I work with IG US, and I am starting to work a little closer with IG International, and hopefully I can sweet talk them into getting a lot more availability to the majority of you if you want to be able to use those tools more and see those tools more in real time. So this is something I will be working on in the next calendar month. I'm not sure if I will be successful or not, um, but if I am, you will be the first to know about it. Um, because whether they end up being helpful to your trading or not, they sure are fun to look at sometimes. I get a kick out of them. Uh, but more good stuff around the Ben traders this coming Thursday. I have a video that is not created for people who have been with this channel the whole time. It's more of a beginner's style video. You guys know I do that sometimes. I have to do that sometimes. Um, but I also think it will be a good review, and it is something worth watching. So stay tuned for that on Thursday. New podcast episodes every Monday morning. It is the middle of December, and there are traders out there who are taking time off because the market is slow, and they're pouting about it. And there are also traders out there who are seeing this as a gigantic opportunity to make their own systems more and more bulletproof. So when the times do get busy again, you're going to be ready to pounce and they will not be. 
So pick a side, traders, and go get it.